following is a presentation of the Pro Wrestling Report. Informative, entertaining, and real since 1998. Coming up next is the Pro Wrestling Report primetime television. We've got Be the Booker for WWE Night of Champions, which is this Sunday on pay per view. Also, big discussion on TNA No Surrender and a bit of an explanation as to what happened with Be the Booker last week. Impact Wrestling that just went off the air, bound for glory, matches are made. And what is indeed happening with Bobby Roode, Wrestling Fortune on Impact? We'll talk about that and so much more, including more product. More shows from the Pro Wrestling Report. Details coming up right now, right here on the Pro Wrestling Report, Primetime Television. This is the Pro Wrestling Report, Primetime TV, the longest running pro wrestling news program in the world, with your hosts, David Hero and Damian Nelson. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Re Report. <laughs> Prime time for Thursday, September 15, 2011. Damian Nelson here sitting alongside David Octavius and Tiberius, the alleged backyard what is the, Hall know, of Famer. I, I brought the plaque. I you, still think it was doctored. You went to Things Remembered at the mall and got that name. It made. doesn't matter. It still says Hall you of Famer. You admit it. No, you just admit it. It doesn't matter if I got I'm it. I'm not here to argue with you. Given, well, you are. You always disagree with me. Lots to talk about this week here on our final edition on cable television as we move to Channel 24. <laughs> my 24. Next Saturday night. It's my 24. TNA No Surrender was this past Sunday on pay-per-view. We talked about it on 540 ESPN this past Monday night. But a lot more to talk about as it pertains to that pay-per-view with some newsworthy items coming out of it, especially leading into the impact you just got done watching. Brand new Knockouts Champion in winter, David Hero, defeating Mickey James with a little bit of help from Angelina Love. Who would have thought Katie Lee Burchill would be a two-time women's wrestling champion? You know what it was? It must have been her appearance at uh, WrestleMania with us in Phoenix. the PWR party last year. Oh, and in Atlanta. Yes. Oh, my God. There you go. It's almost time for Sweet and Sexy, by the way. Oh. Details soon. Sweet and Sexy, we're doing it again? Sweet and Sexy Miami, absolutely we're oh doing it again. Oh my gosh. Bigger and better than uh, Miami, that's that's how rumors start. <sighs> that's, it definitely is. With this, uh, but uh, she is the Knockouts champion again. Is the title bouncing around too much between Knockouts in that division? It might be, but the fact is Mickey James doesn't need to be the Knockouts champion. Right. You know what? Elevate Winter. Elevates in the other girls. You know who I think is going to get it pretty soon is one of the Itas. Sarita? Rosita? One of the two Itas, absolutely. Those girls are over. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, you know, they're like this tall, but Rey Mysterio was a world champion, so why can't they? Austin Aries wins the X Division Championship. The question with this win was it smart? to actually refresh the X Division as they did. They had to, because it, it, it put renewed focus on the X Division, and now it makes Austin Aries the leader of that group. I think he is the right guy. I think they got it right by having him be the, the champ of X Division over Brian Kendrick. And it was fun getting there. The story they told, I think, getting there was, was, was entertaining mm -hmm. and fun. But at the same time, they invested so much into Kendrick beating Abyss that now is he an afterthought? Do they go somewhere else? Because now Jesse Sorensen is the new number one contender. Did you get that autographed football? No, I did not. Huh. I didn't want it. Bobby Roode wins the Bound for Glory series after defeating Bully Ray in a match that had to be de uh, done because both men ended the series with 52 points. Now, after... Or before that match, we heard Eric Bischoff at the pay-per-view come out and say that this would be an unadvertised and an unpromoted matchup that would happen at No Surrender. And, and he was be, not talking about the main event. It would be those two men to determine who walks in to Bound for Glory to take on Kurt Angle, who won his match. You know what? They're lucky they had the time on the pay-per-view for that extra they had match. had nine matches on this pay-per-view this past Sunday. 
Nine. That's pretty good pacing. A good match. And the question, David Hero, I'd love to hear an answer on. Is Bully Ray the best heel in all of professional wrestling right now? At least on television here domestically. I think Mark Henry might be a little bit better because he gets better exposure. I think Billy Ray's a better talker than Mark Henry. Well, Mark Henry doesn't talk. He doesn't have to talk. He's just a beast. But Billy Ray, he's doing everything right because people genuinely dislike the guy. Yeah. Hulk Hogan. Sting. We saw more on Impact a little while ago, but Hogan gets involved in that main event matchup this past Sunday, causing Kurt Angle if to Sting, win. If I'm Sting, and I just get maced or spray paint or whatever, you know, my salt in the eyeballs. Is that better or worse than being insane in the membrane? The last place I'm going to want to go is to crawl back in the ring. Right? That's if the only place see, you knew where to get to. If you can't see, why do you go back in the ring? Hogan should have grabbed him and threw him back in the ring. Sting looked rather silly by going in there on his own. <laughs> I'm looking for a towel, you know, a bottle of water, wash the eyeballs out. I'm not going to go back in there. That would have told a better story. You, the fans, 90% of you, at least on our Facebook page, said that this pay-per-view was a failing pay-per-view. We did 90%. put a caveat on that. Well, we said, as long as you watched it, you could vote. Going into it, we asked a lot of people if they were going to watch it, and most of you said no. So, be that as it may, I, for one, thought this pay-per-view delivered some great wrestling, and I'm satisfied with the night of Bobby Roode. Because, really, that's what I'm walking away from this pay-per-view with, is the presentation of Bobby Roode over the course of the evening. And I'm a very happy for Bobby Roode. We've been to many TNA house shows, TNA live events. That guy is always working out. He is a machine when it comes to... He is a younger Kurt Angle. Mm -hmm. He's that dedicated to his craft. Now, with that being said, my only concern is, is Bobby Roode, can they make him a big enough star to headline Bound for Glory? And they got a few weeks to get this done. they got a month. I think we found out he's going to be headlining Bound for Glory uh, just a few minutes ago. We'll talk about that in a minute. But David Hero last week, a little bit of an incident as it pertained to Be the Booker. We're going to be doing Be the Booker for WWE Night of Champions in a few minutes. But um, you had a bit of an explanation this past Monday on the radio show. But how about for our TV audience, we talk about the justification that you feel you had in walking out of your duty to do Be the Booker I, I for TNA No Surrender. I booked the show. I just didn't go in-depth into it. Sort of what be the Booker's Hall Okay, about. there's four matches. Just like, like SummerSlam. But SummerSlam, you had all the main players, their matches announced. SummerSlam could have happened with just CM Punk and Kurt and jo John Cena announced. Right, but you had Cena and, uh, and uh, Punk, and you had Orton and Christian. Okay, so those are your, those are your two big titles. If those there were the a main event events. that were, had been announced for No Surrender, would you have done an in-depth? I would have booked. The, I would have booked the five matches. Absolutely, but I'm not going to sit there and book Impact, which I DVR and fast forward through in the first place. Why would I? Why? Why? Why should I insult their intelligence and waste my time? Right. You're right. And I think what we're going to do, actually what I know we're going to do, and I hope you're ready for this. Yeah? It's a special series. Oh, no. Another one? We are going to go in-depth on what's right and what's wrong with TNA Wrestling and how to fix it. Because a lot of in people depth. talk about in-depth. that going to be? We're doing a three-week series starting next Wednesday on our website, oh, pwrshow.com. Three special episodes. First, we'll look at what's right with TNA. Then we'll look at what's wrong with TNA. And then we'll look at how to fix it. Okay. So we can explain all... Because there's a lot more than just four matches being advertised for No Surrender. That's an issue that I think needs to be raised and talked about. And we'll do that specifically for all of you over the course of the next three well, weeks starting next sweet. Wednesday. Look at you pandering... Because now we got to do a make good. I'm not pandering. I feel it important to explain our position in-depthly. So you want, you want us to explain our frustration with TNA? I want us to look at... Because we don't hate TNA. We're frustrated for them because of our relationship with T 
TNA front office, with TNA talent. I want to take an opportunity to look at the good things that TNA is doing, because I don't think enough focus is the given Not God's calendar. Coyote Ugly calendar, Miss October 2012, Linda Kay. Wow. I want to also take a look at and explain the reasoning behind some of the bad things they're doing. And I also want to look at how maybe it could all be fixed. So we'll do that over the course of the next three weeks. Special editions, pwrshow.com, Wednesday nights, David Hero. By the way, you know, next Saturday night we start on My24 Milwaukee. And when we start on My24 Milwaukee, PWR is delivering about five nights a week of new product. More details on that, that was and so much more contract. when we come back. Still to come here on the Pro Wrestling Report tonight, we're going to talk about Impact Wrestling that just went off the air. We're going to do Be the Booker for WWE no, Night of Champions. There's no five nights in this thing at all. And more. This is the Pro Wrestling Report, primetime television. Peter Richards, Ring of Honor World Champion. Flores Report is coming to my unit for Milwaukee. Get ready. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report Primetime Television. It's Thursday, September 15, 2011. David Hero, just before we went on the air, TNA Impact Wrestling went off the air, and it is now official. At least so it appears. At Bound for Glory, it will be Hollywood Hulk Hogan versus Sting on pay-per-view. We knew it was going to be there. We knew that's where it was going. Why is it such a big shock? Why are you all upset about it? I don't think the match should be happening. Why? It happened 14 years ago. Okay. Nobody wants it anymore. We'll see. I certainly will. What? If I'm making what, that interactive happens, decision or whether or not to order the pay-per-view. What happens if this is the most bought TNA pay-per-view of all time? I will say I was wrong. Okay. You know what? Ric Flair you know what? versus Sting you know was the Listen, match that made it happen. When this happens, we're gonna get since we got a new set now and everything coming, we're gonna get you a little podium. We'll get a little seal. I have a presidential seal in my possession. I th I think I think that will be fantastic. You will say that I was right. That Hogan and Sting. No, I'm not going to say you were right. I will gladly say that I was inaccurate in my assessment that Hogan and Sting would not draw. So you were mistaken. Inaccurate in my assessment. Okay. Ric Flair versus Sting is the match that made it all happen. Ric Flair in Ric the ring Flair again. Ric Flair is the patsy. Like Lee Harvey Oswald? Yeah. I mean... They should have had Sting versus Flair at, Bound, at No Surrender to get to Hogan. It's more of a story there. Well, at No Surrender, but... Uh, no. Right? Yeah. But I guess more people watched it on Impact tonight than bought the pay-per-view. That's why they do that stuff. Same thing happens in WWE. More people watch Raw than have ordered the pay-per-view. Right, but there's more interest in the pay-per-view. You, know you know what? Thank God they follow us on Twitter. Because for those that don't order the pay-per-view, they know what's going on. Kurt Angle makes a series of matchups with his opponent at Bound for Glory after No Surrender, Bobby Roode. And that series of matchups will be Bobby Roode taking on a member of Fortune each week. And this week it was Kazarian, and uh, Bobby Roode makes him tap out with the Crippler Crossface, or the Crossface. I don't understand this at all. They're friends, right? Yes. In theory. Why, why don't they just lay down and let him win? Keep him fresh. Finger poke? So when he, yes. So when he gets to Bound for Glory, he's not beaten up by wrestling all of his buddies. I think you might be thinking just a wee bit too logical. No, I'm thinking creatively. Get over on Immortal. Be smarter than them. Make them frustrated. So then Bobby Roode becomes a bigger star, that he's smarter than Kurt Angle, that he's smarter than Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff. Doesn't this give the opportunity for Kurt Angle to somehow get involved without them necessarily having matches and them not necessarily touching each other until the pay-per-view, no, you know should be effective? It, it, it should be Bobby Roode against Abyss. It should be Bobby Roode against Scott Steiner. It should be Bobby Roode against Bully Ray. 
and Gunner, the heels, not his friends. How does this help Kazarian? <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. Impact overall tonight. Uh, Follow-up show to No Surrender. Again, solidly on the track to Bound for Glory. First of three taped shows that will be airing over the next several weeks. But then TNA goes back on the road and are going to have some more of those live shows, which just look so immensely better than the uh, Impact Zone shows uh, going into Bound for Glory, which is going to be very strong for them. What else do you think we're going to see at Bound for Glory? We saw Samoa Joe make Matt Morgan tap out tonight by submission. Well, tap out by submission, duh, but tap out. Um, and uh, Pope is uh, the test mocker. I don't know what's going on with that whole thing. But well, no, it was Diva and Pope at the girls against Mexican America. The Edas and Mexican America. It makes sense. So you, you got to figure Ken and, and Bully Ray. That's where that's headed. Because mm -hmm. they haven't had their big blow-off yet. Right. And I feel bad for Ken to go into Philadelphia, <laughs> Bully Ray's second hometown. Right. That's not going to end well. For anybody. Well, we'll continue covering Impact each and every week. I want to remind you again that this is our final Thursday airing of the Pro Wrestling Report primetime television. But... Uh, your Thursdays will not be void, because starting next week, right here in this time slot, coming to you from the Pro Wrestling Report, it's a brand new show. <coughs> it will be the TNA Impact Wrestling Post Show, called Sudden Impact Radio, David Hero, Sudden Impact Radio, That's Thursday night. That's not is it? You will not be on that show. Because you know I'm biased towards certain people on TNA, and I would hate to offend everybody out there. Thursday nights after Impact, 10 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. Going to be live on Blog Talk Radio. Going to be taking your phone calls, talking about the impact that just aired, and more. Who's doing the show? Sudden Impact Radio. Maybe they should tune in uh, next week to find out. They'll be free Thursday after Impact. Are you going to tell me at least who's doing the show? Why would I? You you leak stuff. I got band aids. You talk to the dirt sheets. Well, we are a dirt sheet. <laughs> <laughs> you take that bet right now. We're not <laughs> anything near a dirt sheet. We have verified news. We specify we, you know the what? rumors. We're we, not a dirt we, sheet. We are verified. But some but we you, edit. you know, but you know what? The way you treated Chris Masters, he feels Chris Masters this side of the table kicked. is the dirt sheet. He's gonna get his ass I'm kicked in his bra. Done. I'll say that. And I, you see that check right there? No, I don't see a check. That's backing it up. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to back that check up. That check says, to Chris Masters, amount of ass whooping. You know Blizzard Brawl is going to be an IPPV, so everyone can watch you get your butt whooped by the masterpiece. You keep thinking that, and I want all you to think out there as well, that I have got no chance against Chris Masters, the masterpiece. And, uh, you know, wait till my robe comes off and the mirrors are in front of me and Pyro's going off by me. Oh, oh there's no Pyro in the Blizzard Brawl. Oh, budget. yeah. I got my own budget for this gig. Okay. Yeah. You better get some catchy theme music. Sudden Impact Radio, next Thursday night and each and every week following Impact Wrestling. David Hero. Yes. On pay-per-view weeks, we'll be on five nights a week. F uh, 540 ESPN Monday nights this week. Coming up, our guest is David Lagana of the uh, ever-so-popular I Want Wrestling podcast. And uh, definitely got to tune in. He's all those. full of shenanigans, too. You guys do a lot of shenanigans back and forth. He'll be our guest for the first time this upcoming Monday night. Be sure to tune in to the show that you definitely don't want to miss. And if you haven't checked it out, go to IWantWrestling.com and listen to uh, the latest, which I believe features uh, one of the creators or writers from 12 Rounds, John Cena's movie. Very interesting uh, conversation between those two on that podcast. So Lagana joins us Monday night on 540 ESPN. And then next Thursday, as I mentioned, Sudden Impact Radio Live. Next Friday, David Hero. Next Friday. Well, actually, not next Friday, but the next pay-per-view Friday. It will be be the nervous. booker. Be the booker for the upcoming pay-per-view, and then on Saturday, of course, prime time is going to be on at 10 o'clock p.m. Following Ring of Honor Wrestling on My 24 Milwaukee. My 24. Each and every Saturday night. But don't fret if you're not in this Wisconsin area. You will still be able to watch the Pro Wrestling Report after it airs on My 24 Milwaukee. So 10.30 Saturday nights on our online distribution channels, you'll be able to check out that show. And don't forget, the Pro Wrestling Report is also on your Raku player. It's also on your... Haku? God bless you. It's also on DirecTV if you have the proper HD box that can... Uh, you can pick up a season pass 
as well on TiVo, on your TiVo box. So many ways to bring the Pro Wrestling Report into your living room each and every week. We are on, uh, if you have the appropriate HD box, oh yes, you gosh. can find us on Direct TV and on TiVo. You sign up for that season pass. Uh, you can get all those links at pwrshow.com. That's So that's fantastic. never miss an episode. And also in one of the top 20 video podcasts for sports each and every week on iTunes. Again, the show is yours, and you are able to check it out at many different opportunities. So five nights a week, David Hero, following or concluded by the post show after pay-per-view Sundays. So twice a month, five nights a week, every other week, three nights a week. But Holy don't forget. Crap. That's more dates than most TNA talent have on their contract. And speaking of that, TNA in-depth, Wednesday night. Starting next week. So Hump Day is with TNA. No, I'm, yeah, but before that, I'm gonna. I got dinner. Did you get invited? Dinner with Linda. Okay. No. Let's go look it up. Yes. Well, for her, she's like this tall. We're gonna take a time out when we come back. It's be the Booker for WWE Knock. This is Jay Lethal of Ring of Honor Wrestling telling you that Pro Wrestling Report is coming to My24 Milwaukee. Welcome back to the Pro Wrestling Report. Damian Nelson along with David Hero, and it's time for Be the Booker for WWE Night of Champions, which is this Sunday on Pay-Per-View. Are you down with BTB? Oh yeah, you know me. In this segment, we take a look at the card as announced, and David Hero acts as, as if the time of this taping. Acts as if he's the booker and runs down the card and shows how he would book it if he were the man holding the pencil. Well, the, first, well wait, we first got to show the people who are the super friends. And who's the Nelson family? Anyone underlined in red is a super friend. The blue jabronis? That guy. So, I got Dolphy Z, I got Randy Orton, I got The Miz, I got John Cena, I got ADR. I also have 1,330 points. And then the Nelson family has John Morrison. I only have 155 more points than Kofi. Me. I got five. I got 70 at you got uh, Punk. No Surrender. You only got and 75. You're talking about you have 1175. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Well, you better start sprinting and get close First matchup is a four-way for the United States Championship. Dolph Ziggler defends his title against three others in the names of Jack Swagger, Alex Riley, and John Morrison. Obviously, some backstory between Swagger and Ziggler. We saw this breakdown this past Monday night on Raw. What do you think is going to happen, or what would you make happen, David Hero? Well, if I'm going to book this pay-per-view, it's... It's not simple, but it's what's what I think is going to make the most sense. The most important thing is Dolph Ziggler. Dolphy Z! He is the United States champion, and he's doing tremendous. He's one of the best workers in the business. Tremendous bumper. Everything, everything looks good. Do you put the belt on Swagger so then Ziggler and Swagger feud, which then leaves A. Ryan Morrison out in the cold? No, you don't do that. What you have to do, and it pains me in my heart of hearts to do this, you gotta let Alex Riley, what? who has been the forgotten what? player, he's been the forgotten player, okay? Let Swagger screw Ziggler. So then these two guys can go off and do something on their own, and now, he, now the title is now on Alex Riley, who needs help. He's not even getting any intro music anymore. And maybe him and Morrison do something after that. But if I'm booking this, he doesn't the title because I honestly believe Ziggler will go on to become the number one contender for the winner of this match. Hmm. Okay, eventually, Alex Riley will leave the new United States champion at Night of Champions. Wow, surprising. He needs it. Out of all the guys You're here, right. these two can you know, argue each that, other up. I would argue, though, that maybe Morrison needs it as well. <laughs> I would argue that maybe Swagger needs it as well. Been a long time since either of those men had gold on their shoulder. a -Rai. Must have been the rub from The Miz. Next matchup is for the Divas Championship. It's Kelly Kelly versus Beth Phoenix. Kelly Kelly mixing it up with Vicky last week on Raw. This week on Raw, rather. Beth Phoenix got involved. This one, Beth Phoenix wants to change 
the Divas division in WWE. Will she defeat Kelly Kelly and become the champion to do so? You know, I would love to see Beth Phoenix take the belt off of Kelly Kelly. I really would. Because I think Beth Phoenix and Natalie Neidhart, they really are the future of women's wrestling because they're believable. Unfortunately, I have a funny hunch that Kelly Kelly might leave, but will be battered. Broken down? What you do then is then, okay, she beats Beth Phoenix the first time, beats Beth Phoenix the second time establishing that, you know what, Kelly Kelly has heart, she's a champion. And then maybe at the next pay-per-view, you have Kelly Kelly versus Beth Phoenix versus Natalia. Mm. Okay? In a three-way. Match. Absolutely. And that's when these two put the boots to Kelly Kelly and take the title. The fans love Kelly Kelly. They really do. Yep. I say do something where what she does all the time, a quick roll-up, something quick. I want to see Beth Phoenix win, but I think they're going to prolong this a little bit longer because they really have nobody else ready to go. Eve versus Beth Phoenix is down the road. Mm -hmm. they got to save that for, for the Royal Rumble. I think Kelly Kelly might leave or retain the title. Tag Team Championship on the line. The team of Kofi Kingston and Evan Bourne. Air Boom goes up against the former WWE champion, The Miz, and R-Truth. Will there be, would there be, if you were writing this, new Tag Team Champions Sunday night at Night of Champions? Not yet. I wouldn't do it on Night of Champions because you just gave the belts to Air Boom. And individually, they both lost to Miz and R-Truth on Raw and on SmackDown. SmackDown hasn't happened yet, David. Smackdown's this is air tomorrow night. This is airing Friday night. No, this is airing Thursday. You have to apologize to all those people out there. Okay, well, rewind. The sporto that we just took out of the show. You know what? You'll be fine. <laughs> so Air Boom is going to retain, and they might lose him the next night on Raw. He collapsed like Usher. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Air Boom, if they're going to lose it, they will lose it on Raw or on Sm or on SmackDown, to get more viewers on SmackDown. Yeah, that's going to do it. It could. They can't take the belts off these guys yet. If not, what's next for the dynamic duel, the odd couple of the Miz and R-Truth? These guys are going to stick together. They're going to rematch Monday Night Raw for the titles, and they might win there. Mm -hmm. It would mean more to win on Raw for them than on the pay-per-view. In this particular situation. Absolutely. The World Championship on the line. Randy Orton defends his title against the monster, Mark Henry. David Hero, if you were making this one happen, how would you make it go down? There's only one way to do this match. And that is you gotta go with the guy that has taken out the Big Show, he has taken out Kane, and he damn near squashed Sheamus. Mm -hmm. If Randy Orton beats Mark Henry at Night of Champions, all that stuff is useless. Goes away, just the like that. The steam for Oof. Put the belt on Mark Henry. Let him roll over, guys. Knock Randy Orton out for a couple weeks or a month or whatever. Let them have a big rematch at Hell in the Cell, which I'm sure that's where it's going to go to. Okay? But let Mark Henry have a run, even if it's for one month. One month run with Mark Henry will mean a lot more for Randy Orton to win the title back. And let's not forget, in the month of October, they've got three pay-per-views to uh, sell. In October, there's three? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sorry, two. I yeah. was counting TNA as well. Yeah. Vengeance and Hell in a Cell. So that's what you do, is Randy Orton drops the belt to Mark Henry, Mark Henry beats him at Vengeance, they have the rematch at Hell in a Cell, and that's where Orton goes back over. And then starts the program with Dolph Ziggler. Dolphy Z. Dolphy Z. World Wrestling Entertainment Championship on the line. John Cena, who is pissed off more than pissed off can be, and Alberto Del Rio. Those two mix it up this Sunday night at Night of Champions Hit for the music. WWE Championship. You don't have music. Oh, I got music. If we're going to do ADR, we're going to do ADR right. Okay? How would Why you, you roll your eyes? Because I want to see what kind of rental car you're going to say Alberto Del Rio is going to drive out Sunday. You know night. what? If he can afford it, who cares if he can pronounce it? Okay? 
Rich, handsome, and powerful. Sound familiar? I heard uh, at a debate earlier this week that the pronunciation of your last name didn't matter. Well, mine does. It's hero. Two R's. John Cena, all he does is bury Alberto Del Rio. Okay? Makes fun of him, says he doesn't deserve it, tries to beat him up, says he can't. He doesn't know anything about the cars. Do you think he made him wear that fake gold necklace this past Monday night? Brutal. I don't even want to talk about that. It's embarrassing. How has ADR ever gotten back over on John Cena since he's won the title? Not at all. He hasn't. So what does that tell you? Keep him strong. Let him screw John Cena. Let him beat him. It's his destiny. Let Cena chase ADR. They have not gotten anything out of this feud at all yet. There's been no money made in it whatsoever. Let these guys chase for a little bit. Let this feud end at Hell in the Cell also. No disqualification. Triple H gets back into the ring for the first time since WrestleMania, and he takes on CM Punk. We saw that heated exchange this past Monday night to end out WWE Raw. What a great way to sell buys on this pay-per-view on Sunday Night of Champions. But if Triple H loses this match, if CM Punk wins, Triple H is resigning as a COO of WWE. And David Hero, there's a lot of outside influence potentially there to affect this matchup. This match is very interesting. It's to the point where I'm honestly uncertain which way it's going to go until I watch the end of Raw. If I'm booking this pay-per-view, this main event, I'm not worried about Kevin Nash coming down to the ring interfering because I don't think he's going to be there. CM Punk, Triple H, no DQ. Anything goes. Anything goes. Now, how did Raw end besides Punk hitting H with the microphone? The microphone cut out on Punk three times, which means there's other powers that be that are going to try to screw CM Punk at Night of Champions. Johnny Ace? Could be Johnny Ace. Steffi Bear? It could be Steph. Uncle it could Defense? be Vince. It could be any one of them. If CM Punk, put it this way, if, if Kevin Nash comes down and, let's say, gets involved in this match, which causes Triple H to lose... Where does CM Punk go? Because he'll be left with the pipe bomb in his hand. Okay? Because you got to figure H and Nash are going to have a match. Cena and ADR are in a program. Where does that leave CM Punk? What has to do to prolong this program with CM Punk is Triple H. In a no DQ match, anything goes, anything can happen, will beat CM Punk. Unfortunately, there will be a screw job where Punk is going to get screwed, but Triple H will be aloof to the whole thing because all the other X factors involved. Which then much like he was at SummerSlam. Which then keeps things rolling. This it, this has to keep going for another month or two. And assuming it's the last match that puts smiles on. Half the people's faces. No, I don't even know if this will be the last match. Yeah. It'll be Cena and, I'm guessing Cena and ADR are going to end the show. I don't see why H and Punk would do that. WWE Night of Champions this Sunday night on pay-per-view. Let's run down the way David Hero has seen this night going. Dolph Ziggler loses the United States Championship to Alex Riley. Divas Championship stays around the waist of Kelly Kelly. The tag team titles stay on air. Boom. Mark Henry becomes a new world heavyweight champion. Alberto Del Rio drives out in his rental car with the WWE Championship belt. And Triple H remains the COO of WWE by beating CM Punk. Be the booker for WWE United Champions is in the books this Sunday night right after the pay-per-view. Be sure to tune into the Pro Wrestling Report, the post show. Talking about whether or not this stuff happened the way you saw it, and talking about what you thought of the pay-per-view. That's a Sunday right after uh, the Pro Wrestling Report. I'm sorry, right after WWE Night of Champions. And what I was getting to is this Monday night on the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN, ESPNMilwaukee.com. Dave Lagana at Lagana on Twitter. A lot of people know about that. I want wrestling. It's be a great show. Dot com will be our guest and be spending some time with us talking about his time in wrestling. So be sure to tune into that, and we will see you Sunday night for the post show for WWE Night of Champions at PWRShow.com.